Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I can officially say welcome back because this is my second video. This one's gonna be a little bit different. Something else that I'm uh, gonna experiment with and see if there's any interest in is just some different equipment reviews. Uh, today, I'm gonna do a review of two different uh, bikes that are brand new. It's the Ibis Ripley V4S versus the Ibis Ripmo V2. These were both 2023 models, both XT builds with carbon wheels. Um, so they're kind of comparable bikes. I took them out on my home trail in Egan, Minnesota to see how they were. Right off the bat, I just want to throw the elephant in the room out. I failed you guys. Uh, the audio on this video is terrible. Uh, this video encouraged me to go research how to uh, record better audio on my GoPro, especially when I'm biking with wind. I did buy a mic with a windshield, which is way better. So just know future videos for biking is gonna be way better audio. Hopefully you can bear through this one. I think it's still worth a watch. Hey, if you like what I'm doing here, please uh, click the like and the subscribe button down. I'm brand new to this and all the likes and subscribes kind of help build my channel a little bit. So with that said, let's go back to Egan, Minnesota because I am right now wandering again in Nashville, Tennessee and check out the Ibis, Ripley and the Ripmo. Today is an exciting day. Uh, today I've been looking forward to for several months now. Uh, like most mountain bikers, I kind of want a new bike. Uh, so I have been researching the heck out of different bikes, kind of leaning towards the short travel uh, 130, 120 range for my new bike. And today, Ibis Cycles is going to be at my home trail, Lebanon Hills here in Egan, Minnesota. Uh, for a demo day, I'm going to go ride a Ripley in a Ripmo. All right, here we are at Lebanon Hills. Got the Ibis tent right behind me. We're gonna go check out some bikes. Like I said, Ripley and Ripmo, see what's up. All right, here it is, the Ripley V4S in the bad apple color. Gonna do the uh, demo here. This is one that I'm really, really excited about. Pretty kind of similar to my Mojo. We have the DW Link in the back, running the uh, factory Fox float shock with a Fox 34 up front. This is the XT build. And we do have the carbon wheels on this as well. So uh, definitely a little bit of the higher end build. Uh, pretty comparable to my Mojo, which is an X01 Eagle with the uh, carbon wheels as well. And here we go, heading out on the new 2023 Ripley V4S on my home trail here in Lebanon, Egan, Minnesota. Just right off of the bat, you really notice that steeper seat tube angle and uh, the path. So this trail starts out with a little bit of a climb. So let's see how she does. I did demo a Rocky Mountain Element out here last week. Was not very impressed with that bike. Um, just having a lot of pedal strikes and it just didn't feel like it quite fit me. I don't know. This is a medium, kind of right between a medium and a large. All right, just got done with the climb up. Uh, yeah, this thing climbs. Um, very, very efficient in the climb. Uh, no, no noticeable bob in the suspension uh, when you're on it. I have it in the wide open mode here. So, hey. Uh, now we're going to try a little bit of the downhill uh, section here. Uh, also, like no pedal strikes on some areas that I had some pedal strikes with the uh, Rocky Mountain Element. And then also kind of some technical root areas. So it right over it. So we're doing a little rock climb here. Uh, I did hit the uh, either the frame or the bottom bracket there. And I don't normally on my Mojo. Oh, that's just smooth. Smooth off of that first little drop. Very easy to get in the air. Oh, the quartering. There's right over all this chunk and it's little bump after little bump and that rebound is set just about right. So yeah, very impressed with this bike there. Uh, the medium's feeling pretty good. I do feel like maybe again that reach just a little bit out more. 
Got one of my favorite features coming up here. It's called the banana split. Little banana drop. Jump kind of kind of mixes a jump and a drop. It's angled up a little bit. Like a jump, but I ride it more like a drop. See how the Ripley handles the banana split. Smooth. Just poppy off of stuff. Just poppy. Up and over. Yeah. I see why this is uh, Ibis's most popular bike. So just going through some technical climbs that I just kind of went through. Uh, one thing I did notice is this front tire on the climb, I mean, it just stays planted. Uh, my mojo, when I get up cranking, uh, I have a tendency to pull that front tire a little bit and uh, comes up off the ground. This thing, it just wants to go up and just stays planted with very good traction. This is the end of the climb here. A couple little features to get over. See how it does on this techie part. Right over that, no problem. And yeah, didn't lose any traction. There was no wheel slip. Just bit down and went. Got a little techie rock garden area coming up here. I'm not great at rock gardens. This is an intermediate loop, not even the advanced loop, which has some harder ones. I'm usually about 50% clearing this. Let's see how the Ripley does. So I usually can get a pedal strike on my Mojo on that one and I didn't. Noticeably easier on this bike than my Mojo. I think those 29 inch wheels uh, just helped get right through that clean. We do have a more advanced rock garden coming up that'll try. That one I'm like one for 10 in clearing. It's not great. It's right here. And here's the harder part. Just gotta really pick the right line through here. Up and over. Missed the tree. So yeah, yeah, way better through there. Again, I'm normally one through 10 on that. Did get the front wheel to slip out a little bit there, wasn't paying attention to it. Too excited for getting through the rocks. Yeah. This bike just makes you better than you are. Uh, bike's very easy to get off the ground, kind of hop over stuff. I uh, just move it around. It's very responsive steering. I believe Jason from MTB Yum Yum describes it as twitchy. Uh, and I would agree with that. Kind of coming up to those bigger drops here in the black section. Um, two back to back. See how the 120 handles it. No problem, didn't bottom out. Take a look at the suspension here. So if you look at the fork, didn't quite bottom that out. And the rear shock almost bottomed out, but it's not off. So even those two decent drops back to back, uh, I didn't bottom out or go through all the travel uh, on this suspension. At least for everything here, uh, the Ripley is plenty of bike for these, this trail. Just smoothing those landings. Got another uh, decent drop coming up here. This is the one where I will bottom my mojo out on. I think it's a little bit higher than the other ones. No problem. A little jump afterwards. Oh, this thing just gets in the air. Climbing back out to the parking lot on the Ripley. Man, YouTube can only do this thing so much justice. Get out and demo one of these and uh, ride it. In short, shut up and take my money. Uh, this one's at the top of the list right now. 
All right, here we're going to go for the second demo. Now we're going to go to the Ibis Rip or Rip Mo, excuse me. This is in the Bruce Banner Hulk Green. Uh, going up, going to try the size large. According to Ripley's website, uh, their their large is running 5'7 to 6'1. I'm about 5'8, 175. Uh, the medium felt pretty good on the Ripley, but we're going to try this out. Uh, running the Fox 38 on this one with 160 mil of travel up front. Running the Fox Float X2 on the back at 147. Uh, this is again the XT, a, a Dior XT build uh, with the carbon Ibis wheels and i9 hubs. So probably comparable to what I would be looking uh, to buy. I was blown away with the Ripley. Uh, that thing was awesome. We're gonna check out the Ripmo here and see how it compares. Here we go. We're gonna pull out on the Ripmo. Riding the size large over the uh, medium. I kind of fall in between sizes or I'm at the high end of the medium and the short end of the large a little bit. So see how this one goes. I mean, obviously going to the Ripmo from the Ripley and then from medium to large, definitely much more bike here. Definitely uh, feel like you drive a little bit of a bigger boat. Just finished the climb up on the Ripmo. Uh, definitely a good climber. Um, yeah, not as good as a Ripley. I mean, noticeably not as good. Um, but we'll see if it makes up for it on the downhill here. Get up and over our rock again. So that front end's heavier. Uh, it's harder to pop up over that. Uh, that C tube angle again being comparable with the Ripley is just kind of a nice balance of uh, pedal efficiency but that extra travel there when you need it say so not as lively as the Ripley let's see how it does on the banana split here oh my yeah I didn't feel it uh, definitely noticeably softer on that landing than the Ripley uh, one thing I have noticed and I guess I didn't notice it on the Ripley is uh, I mean you get a little bit of I mean not I mean very minimal pedal bob in the lower suspension. Um, I think it's just kind of the way I'm biking, kind of heffing with my upper body a little bit. Um, I am getting some bob in the fork when I'm pushing against it. I'm uh, trying to get a little extra momentum on these climbs. Here comes a little bit of the sketchy part. Again, stays planted. Um, Rear tire got a little hung up there. Wasn't quite as clean through there as the Ripley was. But again, on a climb, that's not surprising. Gonna get a little downhill here with some, some of the drops. Really interested to see how this thing does on these. Again, even just nosing down, that fork is really nice. Let's go the bigger line, there we go. Off the jump. I uh, definitely I cased that a little bit there. So if I was just going slower than the Ripley. Um, but yeah, definitely softer landings, but not as poppy. Uh, the bike's noticeably heavier. Again, to be fair, I went from a medium frame to a large, but this is definitely a heavier bike and a little bit harder to get off of the ground. If you like to jump and pop around, uh, it's more planted, it's more stable. So I think going some chunky downhill, I would definitely feel more comfortable on this. I'm um, just charging those than the Ripley. But for me and my style of riding, that Ripley is gonna be hard to beat. See how we do on this uh, rock garden here. Might get some traffic. Was able to clean this pretty easy on the Ripley. Bobbed up right there when I had to put a foot down already. Hey guys. So pretty good. Again, I'm just feeling that rear tire gets hung up on the rocks uh, more than the Ripley. I think that's just from the probably the longer wheelbase. And again, it's a little bit more weight on it. Um, it just doesn't roll over at the slow speeds, those rocks, quite as good. See how we do on this uh, rock garden here. 
might have some traffic. Was able to clean this pretty easy on the Ripley. Bobbed up right there when I had to put a foot down already. Hey guys. So pretty good, again, I'm just feeling that rear tire gets hung up on the rocks uh, more than the Ripley. I think that's just from the, probably the longer wheelbase. And again, it's a little bit more weight on it. Um, it just doesn't roll over at the slow speeds, those rocks quite as good. It did have a pedal strike right there. Ah, yeah, so with the longer wheelbase, um, this is just harder to move around. This rock garden at slower speeds. Yeah, noticeably, noticeably more difficult than that Ripley was. We go off of this bigger drop here to be a nice big test for the Ripmo. Um, again, I was really impressed with how the Ripley handled this. And let's see how the Ripmo does. Ah, just smooth. Yeah, very nice. Ah, again, not as high on the jump afterwards. Again, just a heavier, burlier bike. Not quite as lively or twitchy, I believe was the uh, word we use. Climbing back out on the Ritmo. Our kind of final thoughts. Definitely a bigger, burlier bike. Uh, definitely more noticeable difference from the Ripley than I was expecting. Um, they, they're very, uh, very different bikes for very different kinds of riders. Um, the Ritmo, I feel like I didn't really give it a fair shake. Uh, being as a trail I'm on is not overly burly, rocky, um, point it downhill, downhill park, enduro kind of riding, which is what this bike is made for. So, for me, this being my home trail that I ride, well, probably two, three times a week, uh, the Ripley's hands down the winner. For me and my riding and my style. Um, yeah, that's my two cents. Ripmo was still a lot of fun. Definitely glad I tried it. Um, just don't think it's the one for me in my riding.